as we present right now, Bruce Douglas, and Bruce comes from Maui, he is a man responsible for, on that island, creating the first ever notion where the government is getting involved with geoengineering in the sense that if somebody comes and sprays this stuff overhead a chemtrail, it's like dropping leaflets out of an airplane. I can't do that at will without it being regulated. Thereby, if somebody's dropping goop and glop and stuff on you, it has to be regulated like a leaflet. There are very clever ways of getting this stuff done, and he's the man behind it. He's also going to be explaining something called chem bombs, the new way to aerosolize and explode this stuff off the coast as it moves in in large waves. What it is, why it works that way, and what you can do to know more about it. Let's say hi to Bruce Douglas. Thank you. Great introduction, thank you very much. So, yes, I'm going to talk about a new way that the aerosols are being sprayed now. If we keep using the word chemtrails, we're going to miss what's really going on. Because chemtrails are now old school. There's a whole new system that's happening now, which I've dubbed chem bombs. Aerial aerosol explosions happening around the globe. And I'm going to take you a journey around and show you what I've been researching and what I've been seeing, how you can yourself go online and look at Google Earth, look at the satellite images and understand what's really going on. So if we keep looking for chemtrails all the time, we're going to miss it because that's not what's really happening. So I'm going to take you on a little journey um, from Maui. And I watched the... Uh, aerosols being sprayed out of the back of planes, and I'd see the lines and I'd watch them grow. But then I saw other patterns that didn't make sense. They were way huger than what could come out of the back of a plane. And I was wondering, you know, where are all these things coming from? How can it be that much aerosols being shot from a plane? So then one day we woke up. Oh, and then I started looking at the... Um, at the satellite images on Hawaii at uh, 11 o'clock each day, they do this high resolution image of the Hawaiian Islands at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes I'd see these trails underneath, like look like a chem trail. Come on, button, there we go. And uh, then other times I'd see massive areas like this just covering the whole area that were huge, not explained by what a chem trail could be doing. And I saw this day after day, here it is, Hawaii obliterated by these aerosol clouds. And you can recognize these clouds because they're stringy, gooey, cotton candy looking things. Uh, they don't look like normal clouds. And they go the opposite direction of the normal trade wind clouds in Hawaii. The trade winds come from the northwest, and these come from the south or from the east, the opposite direction, because they're stratospheric. They're a higher level than the lower clouds. That's the way it works over there, so it's really easy to recognize which cloud is which. So, this is what it looks like over Hawaii, as looking from the sky, thinking, where is all that coming from? Then one day I woke up about 6 o'clock in the morning, and there was this huge thunderstorm, and lightning, and thunder, and winds that were blowing over trees, and thunder that sounded weird, and rolling, and rumbling, and lightning, which we never get in Hawaii, it's unheard of. And we've been getting a lot of it recently with the aerosols, you know. And then suddenly it disappeared just as quickly as it came. And blue sky happened. I said, wait a minute. And I went to the weather side. This is when I was looking at visible images. And I saw, wow, there's Maui. And right off the north shore of Maui, you see that round thing right there of something that looks like an explosion. And it grew bigger and bigger. And uh, then, this is every half hour pictures, which I get from the weather site, so each click is a half an hour. And then it takes over, and then you notice over on Big Island, on the right side, you see another bomb going off there, shooting off into the wind, and then boom, it just dissipates. Let's look at it close up. There it starts, there you see an obvious bomb. Boom, it gets bigger, keeps expanding, blows over the island. And you see the same thing happening over on Big Island, another one going off. And I realized that the game plan has changed. These are aerosol explosions and bombs. And uh, so then I started looking more at the visible imagery on the, on the satellite images. And uh, if you notice, which way do I push this thing so it works? 
Um, if you notice, there's the... Um, there we go. Up here is the um, uh, trade winds, is the jet stream happening when uh, at, in the visible imagery is at night it turns infrared and you see a whole different image. Are we going to get that back up again? Oh, I won't push that button again, so sorry. So what you're seeing in that satellite image is in the lower part you see these white areas that are highly reflective. And I know from the movement of those clouds in what direction they're going, what is tropospheric lower level and what is stratospheric higher level. And what we're seeing there is, and there's a scale there at the bottom, you can see where it's extremely white means it's, highly, it's hotter and or highly reflective. And here you have stratospheric clouds that are hotter and more reflective than the lower level clouds. That's the opposite of what it should be. So what I found out was that the stratospheric clouds are brighter and more reflective than what's down below. Now what should be happening is the lower level clouds should be hotter because that's where it's warmer. Now we're getting stratospheric clouds that are super hot and super reflective and shine like nothing else does. And that is the keynote to understanding where these are happening. So, um, um, the, um, what we're seeing is these explosions happening all over the world now in different places and you can follow them even on Google Earth. Google Earth images are, are infrared and so when you click the weather part of the Google Earth channel it pulls up infrared images. Okay, don't touch the bottom buttons. Let's see if we can click back through it and get where we were. The aerosol explosion taking over the island, the first time I noticed that phenomena. And then I'm looking at the weather satellites. And there's daytime and there's nighttime, and then you see at nighttime it turns infrared and a whole other image happens. Every click is a half hour. You go back in the daytime again and the visible images turn back over. And again, you don't see anything. So you really have to be looking at the infrared images to see what's really going on. So this is the RGB infrared image enhancement. The yellow during the daytime is the background stuff and the white is what I'm calling the aerosol explosions, the aerosols that are floating around. And how do I know when that aerosol right there hits Hawaii, suddenly I'm getting Ken clouds over the island. And so I've witness that every time these type white clouds come over our islands, that's what I see in other places in the world I've seen the same thing. Here's a rainbow enhanced infrared version. And what the happens there, you can see the red is extremely hot. Now you'd ordinarily see something that hot in the eye of a hurricane. That's the only time you should see something that hot in the satellite images. And if you look carefully, you'll see there across the Midwest, growing bigger and bigger, expanding out in all directions, just like a bomb would, taking over the whole area. And you'll see the same area around the uh, equatorial region, around 10 degrees north. There's another battle there. And regularly I'm seeing these over Mexico. And even the jet stream up here in the upper left, you see that's full of aerosols, and those aerosols for that day actually started off the coast of, uh, of um, Japan. And so this day, that, was, that aerosol, I showed you that little bit that hit over Hawaii, these are pictures from that day. Dispersed aerosols, cotton candy looking stringy clouds. Now it's a little bit different in the tropics. We got more moisture, so our clouds look a little more gooey and stringier, whereas here they tend to disperse more and they're more incognito. So what I'm looking for is point source explosions. If you watch this southwest of Hawaii, you'll see one spot out in the ocean where it just continually from one spot keeps going up and then blowing into the uh, stratospheric winds and going toward the northwest, the opposite of our trade winds. 
Now, what I assume is there's a boat or something out there that's shooting these owls. I've never had the chance to fly out and actually find them and explore them myself. But we're getting reports of people seeing these aerosols being shot from the ground in different parts of the world and rising. So here's another image where you can see a point source area right down here where there's aerosols going off and being caught and sprayed into the winds. Now, I don't know if you can play this or not. Maybe we can't because of the system here. But I actually caught right here, this is a video stream, and if we could play it, I actually, this is a camera on the top of the Big Island volcano that shoots one, that looks one direction. I actually saw an aerosol where it was sprayed and I watched it rise up from the tropospheric clouds at around 10,000 feet and rise up into the stratospheric clouds layer at about 15,000 feet. And by the way, that whole layer is chem, was chem aerosols here. So I actually caught that on, on satellite and actually saw that. So here, I was looking at it and I look, look over here in Texas and Oklahoma and you see this big aerosol going off, kaboom, just like a bomb going off over in Texas and Oklahoma and aerosols spraying around Hawaii and you'll see what's often being happening down along the equator zone. And there you look at Texas to see even more of that going off and taking over. So I decided let's look at closer at it and this is uh, the Central Plains, Oklahoma. And you'll see nighttime. Now it's easier to do things at night because this is now nighttime. And you'll see the aerosol going off from one point source, spraying, boom, expanding and getting bigger. And we're going to look at the same thing here across Texas. One point right there going off, creating aerosols from one point and spraying into the stratospheric winds going that direction. Now this was in um, Nebraska with the, uh, it was uh, June 14th, 2011, when uh, Missouri River was in flood, totally flooded. And I saw across Nebraska I'm going to back it up a couple. I saw these aerosols going off. You know, when it's at flood stage, congealing into one big storm, and I checked the weather report and there was a massive storm, you know, being added to an already flooded Missouri River at that time. An engineered thing. Now this is poor Mexico, off, up and down the coast of Mexico. At this time, Mexico was in drought. Okay, and uh, that was August of 2011. New Mexico was having a severe drought. And day after day, I watched these aerosols going off along the coast. And the stratospheric winds at that point were going to the uh, east and would carry the clouds out over the ocean where all the rain would then precipitate out over the ocean. Now here you can see a hurricane starting to form. And I would see day after day of these aerosol explosions going what I conjecture what was happening is it was sequestering the moisture and then the winds would take that off to the ocean where there'd be no rains left for, uh, for Mexico. So here you see day after day of the same phenomena happening and you see a hurricane where I would expect to see very hot temperatures in the eye which is normally where you would see that. And is that hurricane chemically enhanced? I don't know. Could be. Here you see that same phenomena again, day after day. Meanwhile, they're in a drought. Now, if you look at this in water vapor, this is the water vapor thing of the same time period as we last saw. You see the eye of the hurricane here being extremely wet, just like you see the purple and the deep blue color. And you see these explosions right here also being as wet as the eye of a hurricane. And you can watch the moisture, all that moisture sequestering into those clouds. And then you can see that going off over the ocean. Now normally, you should only see something that bright in the eye of a hurricane. That's the only time you'd have a weather, have a moisture that, that hot. Here you can see the eye of the hurricane is white, that's the top end of the scale. 
day after day, the same thing happening. So how are they doing these? Well, we know they have ways of shooting aerosols from ground level up into the atmosphere. We also figure they can be shooting these from boats out in the ocean. They could also be, you know, dropping them from, from planes and spreading them that way. Um, now this was a day when, in Maui, we were having the um, uh, Whale Day Festival, which is the biggest festival on Maui. And I saw this big, I looked on my, uh, my smartphone and I follow the weather patterns. I'm looking at these and I see an explosion happen off the shore and I see it coming toward us. And I figure, oop, around two o'clock that's going to hit us. I wonder what's going to happen. At two o'clock, there was a massive wind that hit, um, blowing over tents, disrupting the whole festival. You know, uh, high winds and then it got very cold from this front right here when it hit Maui. And then that night there was a source festival on the North Shore and they got totally rained out, totally flooded, and there were floods in, the, uh, in Hanasite as well. It seems like when they do these close range aerosol explosions around Maui, they have really extreme effects. That night, the same thing happened over on Big Island. There's an explosion at nighttime taking all over Big Island. These are like local aerosol explosions which seem to have more short-lived effects than the uh, big ones they do at sea. So they're doing a bunch of that. And here you can see some more right offshore happening. Another day, again, you can see the normal trade wind clouds, the yellow ones going one direction and the uh, aerosols going the other. So let's look at Google Earth. Um, as I mentioned before, Google Earth is an infrared. If you hit the weather channel, the weather layer of the Google Earth, it shows, um, this is what you see. You don't see any lower level clouds. All you see is these bright reflective clouds in certain areas. Now the last series of slides I showed you, showed you a pattern right here of, um, of aerosols being sprayed and this is the same day you see the same pattern from Google Earth so you can see the point source you can follow it very well from Google Earth very simple that way another Google Earth image of the Hawaiian Islands obliterated you can't even see them underneath the cloud level and down here you can see an explosion and sometimes right in the center I see a black dot as it's exploding a telltale sign. You see another one here and here. So sometimes I get that right at the moment when I think is a moment of the explosion <laughs> happening and you see the black dots. I occasionally catch those and this one I caught three of them, three explosions. I would love to someday get a plane and fly out there and find out exactly what's going on, what they're coming from and who's doing that. Here's a close-up of the eye of those things. One, two, three, four, five actually explosions. So um, here you see it again. Here's the Hawaiian Islands. You see those boom, boom, boom explosions. We'll come in closer. You can look at it again. And what you see is when you see it happening, it explodes and then the winds carry it that way. So it kind of looks like a trail, doesn't it? Because it shoots off and as it rises, the stratospheric winds, which are fast moving winds up there, grab it and carry it in a long distance and kind of make it look like long streamers. These are also from aerosol explosions. There was another center right down here. They're blowing them off and, and one right over here. And here they are directly directed to go right over the Hawaiian Islands. Again, you can see where a point source is happening and then it floats off this way with the winds. And then you can see that telltale sign of how it looks as it expands into these big gooey monsters. So then I discovered Funk Top. Now, Funk Top was created by Mr. Funk Top, who was a weatherman, and wanted to exaggerate the upper end of the spectrum so he could look at the eyes of hurricanes. So notice here's the hottest, most reflective part right here in the infrared. It's green. You've got an eye of a hurricane where it's green, which is where you'd expect that. 
And these others are so exaggerated, you would never see them unless you have a hurricane condition. And I really, funk top really good is because when they blow off the explosions, I can see them as red and they become really obvious. So what I've done now is I start downloading the funk tops. Thank you, Mr. Funk Top. And there you can see Mexico going off and a big explosion happening right over the Midwest. This is in everybody's plain sight. It's amazing that, you know, we're still seeing that. You don't see any lines like chemtrails, like from coming from the back of a plane. Mexico is regularly getting hit, and Mexico's in our sphere one of the biggest things happening. You can even see the normal jet stream here from explosions, you know, way off a long ways away, and by the time it actually flows over America, it's pretty well dispersed into a haze, so people don't even know what's hit them. So you see another one happening there off Texas. Now, a lot of times they do these at night when people aren't watching, and this situation is hard to tell what's day and night because it all looks the same on the infrared. Again, all this gray stuff you see, this is all the natural clouds, now normal cloud formations down here. Now often what's hitting Hawaii is these down here along the equator where there's an area where natural cloud formation happens and I think in those clouds they spray when these things shoot across us, then we see the, um, the aerosols. So when those little trailers shoot across us, you notice where that's heading. It's heading toward, of course, California. And by the time it hits California, it's going to be pretty well dispersed. You're not going to know what's happened. So these are day after day of different images. I save these images one at a time, and uh, later, if I get a moment, I'm going to show you where you can actually go to to, to, uh, to find those images and save them. Again, very often off of the coast of Mexico, you'll see this hurricane formation right here at that point. But I often see chemtrails leading into them and being sucked into them, or uh, chem explosions, aerial aerosol explosions. So this is right now the Philippines, okay? Um, the Philippines right now is having floods, big floods. And if you notice, here's the Philippine Islands, and you can see a big aerosol explosion there. And here you'll see another one forming, boom, right there over the center of where they're having the worst of the flooding, over the Philippines. Now, this is massive. This blows my mind, and I think, can this really all be real? Well, this is HARP, HARP in Alaska. Their HAARP, High Energy Active Oil Research Program, other people are going to talk more about it this weekend. But what happens when you ionize the stratus, the atmosphere, these antennas can then move weather patterns around. They work in harmony with about 50 other such arrays, smaller ones, but all around the globe. We even have a mobile harp that comes in out of Honolulu Harbor. That's a huge thing. That's a mobile harp that floats around the Pacific. So working in unison, they all can do crazy stuff, creating these domes in the sky, moving weather patterns around. You'll see all sorts of crazy stuff in the chem clouds. And this one's even crazier, that two and a half hertz is a frequency of an earthquake. So this is uh, the day of the Japan earthquake. And you see harp blowing off a two and a half hertz frequency and the timeline, they shut it down just like an hour after the, hur after the um, earthquake happens. They shut down the two and a half hertz frequency. Interesting, huh? So this is Google Earth. And uh, let's gonna take a little tour around the world here. This is North America. You can see this is, I just did these yesterday. You can see all the explosion areas around South and Central America and off the coast. Hawaiian Islands, not a whole lot of activity there right now. But here is the Philippines, obliterated by this whole explosion right here, the biggest things happening. 
So you can see, you know, here's what's happening. Oftentimes, even uh, um, Australia gets it. Here we have, oftentimes around the equatorial region, all across the planet is where I see the most activity. Even Africa, Central Africa and Congo, which I think they're doing it there because there's the most moisture in the air and uh, it'll keep the clouds aloft longer. I can't say for sure. Here is uh, um, England, uh, um, Europe, where something happened right here and then blew over this way, over them. South America, a lot of activity around the Antarctica. What's going on in the Antarctica? Are they creating the uh, melting of the ice caps with this? It makes me wonder. And there's the Antarctica. You notice lots of activity of this all over the place in Antarctica. And the winds tend to gather at the poles, so a lot of the stuff that gets sprayed ends up going to the poles. And even the North Pole is getting it right there. That's a picture of the Arctic area. If there's chemtrails over the Arctic. Why? You can even see chemtrails from, sky, from space pictures. It doesn't come out really well from what you're seeing, but you can see the haze and stuff floating above all the other things, which when you look at it from infrared satellites, is highly reflective. One day I hope to get a sponsor to go up on a plane and measure those clouds and actually get cloud samples and prove once and for all, are those or are those not aerosol explosion sprays? So I have that dream to be able to fly up with a jet and actually measure them one day. I'm going to show you briefly how you can look it up yourself here. The website is www.ssd.noaa.gov slash goes. You come to a page like this and if you click on goes west, you'll go to this picture right here where you see all sorts of sectors you can go to and stuff. In this case, I'm going to pick Northeast Pacific because I'm looking at the Hawaiian Islands most of the time. And you'll come to this page right here where you have all sorts of things you can choose from, single images or flash images. I like to choose funk top flash. It flash shows like the last six hours of what's happened in a half, inch, half hour increments. And um, it looks like this. And then it plays it over, over and over as a loop. And if you want to actually save the images from this for the past uh, 12, 12 to 24 hours, depending on when the cutoff is, any one of the images that you pull up, it'll say flash-ft for functop HTML. Cut that off and put img for image, and you'll come to this page right here that'll have all the images for each one of the styles saved, and you can open them one at a time and download them and save them, and this is how I get these images. You can also go back to Goes West if you want to look at another area like M MTSTAT is like the Pacific region. And here if I want to look at the Philippines, Okay, here's the Philippines just on August 16th with the intense act geoengineering activity going on. And here I can also click Southern Pacific countries. I go to this page right here and I get another image from the south of uh, Indonesia and again here's the Philippines being hit with this intensive spray activity. Well, there's hope. We, uh, the Maui Clean Sky Ordinance was basically uh, Michael Murphy and I and others got together and said, what can we do that's a positive action to try to do something? We introduced a lot of information about uh, we, any public forum like the Maui Earth Day Festival. We had a major expose and woke a lot of people up what was going on. We had chemtrail symposiums. Uh, brought in speakers, had educational things, had like four or five hundred people show up for a free symposium, and created the Maui Clean Sky Ordinance, which basically says no entity may engage in disbursement of aerosols, chemicals, or any particulate matter into the skies that may enter our breathing atmosphere, into the rain, or that may land on the soils of Maui County, or engage in any geoengineering, climate engineering, or any other activity that may alter the weather or alter the sunlight of Maui County, without first presenting an environmental impact statement to be approved by the Maui County Council, and also receiving the written informed consent of the Maui County Council, exempt from the laws and normal byproducts of normal industry, agriculture, commerce, and transportation. 
That's it in a nutshell. It's now going through the process of going for vote. It was a way, what can we do to affect locally to make a statement? Now we know it's the military and their contractors and other people doing this, and it's not gonna be easy to try to prove it. But just the fact that we stand forward as a, as a county and make a statement. And this isn't saying you can't do it. It says, yes, you can do it, but it's regulated now. Show us your violent impact statement, get our informed consent. Let us know what's happening or else face fines and penalties. So, um, that's my presentation. I will be around uh, the rest of the weekend, so if you have any questions, information, I would be glad to answer your questions. To find out more about the Maui Clean Sky Ordinance, go to MauiSkyWatch.org. MauiSkyWatch.org. Thank you all very much for listening. That was Bruce Douglas.